Greetings from Thompson, Manitoba. We are now in Thompson. We took a flight from Winnipeg this morning at 7.30 a.m. We're killing the day here in Thompson as we await for the train, which is coming from Winnipeg. There's no food service, so that's interesting, and I've seen the food options is very odd from other videos online. We're gonna hang out and do some work for a bit, and then we'll catch you on the train at 5 p.m. So we are now at the Via Rail Thompson station, about to board the train. It takes off at 5. It's a 16 hour overnight train ride to Churchill. It'll be really interesting. I've seen very little videos of this train online, and it's a really unique train. The train's also like a lot smaller than I anticipated. There's two motor cars, I don't know what they're actually called, and then one, two, three, four, five other cars. One of them is for supplies. They bring these supplies up to Churchill from Thompson, I'm pretty sure. So this is like a main way that Churchill actually gets a lot of its supplies up in the planes. Really interesting experience that not, not a lot of people get a, get a seat. So this is my room for the night. It's interesting. So it's, it's small. You have a bed that pulls out here. You have a toilet that is in the room for some reason. A little sink that comes down, drinking water. Amenities, which are pretty nice. A little stowage cubby up here. And this seating is pretty comfortable. Like, it's definitely interesting. Since we knew that the train didn't have an amazing selection of food, we prepared and we picked up some pizza at Santa Ana, I think it's called Santa, in Thompson. Really thick pizza, pretty mediocre if you ask me. Apparently it's the, the best pizza in town. That's surprising to me. The views from the train were absolutely stunning. If you go to the top here, this viewing carriage, it's probably one of the coolest experiences I've had in my entire life. I would say this train is worth it just to experience. And if you have any chance to take any type of train in Canada, I think it's totally worth it. They're fairly outdated and they're fairly slow. We had no idea if we were gonna be able to get alcohol on the train. So we made sure to stock up with some red wine in Thompson. And then we had some cups, had some drinks on the train. I don't think this is necessarily uh, allowed. This might be the right word, but we did it anyways and figured it out. Beer on the train was available for $9. That's the only thing that I remember. Quite expensive on a 16 hour train if you're gonna be having a couple of those. So I'd recommend bringing some if, 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 you, if you choose to partake in that type of activity. The end of the night, I had a nice glass of wine, had some Doritos, threw on good old Clarkson's Farm number three, and just chilled. And that was my night. Good morning. I slept pretty good actually. The first few hours, I kind of struggled to fall asleep. Like this thing moves back and forth so much. But after a while, it was fine. I'm happy I was able to sleep. We also had the absolutely incredible honor of being able to go to Wakusik Adventures with Dave Daly, who is a very interesting man with a lot of stories to tell about dog sledding. We have a little bit of history here, so we share a little bit of history with them. That's my dog sledding. I've been in 16 long distance races up to 400 miles. This is more of a personal space, but I do do a program called TP Tales, 
because of course I got a million stories. So we have the elders out. We have tea, I cooked them arctic char, I cooked them goose, I cooked them moose, so caribou. Uh, when you're racing with the dogs, who do you put in the front? Well, Does it there's different positions for, for different dogs. Some are right-handed, some are left-handed. Some dogs are lead dogs, some dogs are point dogs, some dogs are team dogs, some dogs are wheel dogs. The biggest thing about dog sliding is getting to know who they are yeah. and where they fit into a team. Yeah. Not every dog in this kennel likes each other. So they don't live beside each other. Uh -huh. Not every dog in this kennel is a lead dog. That's the rarest dog in a dog sledding world is a lead dog. Yeah. There's only six dogs out of these 50 dogs that I would trust to take me on a journey. 